All right, so hey everyone, welcome to Curtain Call. I'm Kevin Curtin. I'm here today with a very special guest. Uh, this man right here is one of the greatest drummers of all time, having drummed with Billy Joel for 30 years and playing on some of the best records in music history. It's truly an honor to be here with him today, so without further ado, I introduce you to the legendary Liberty DeVito. Good to see you, Kev. Lib, thanks for being uh, on the show. So great. let's get right into it. You know, I understand growing up in New York, big Beatles fan, uh, big Rascals fan, what was it about the drums that got you hooked? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, in later years, uh, after the success with Billy Joel and stuff like that, I never knew quite why it was the drum set. Why the drums, not a guitar, not a piano, stuff like that. So I asked my father, I said, why did you get me drums? And he said, because we didn't make Prozac back then. Yeah, so I guess I was a wild kid, and he wanted something to calm me down. And um, I guess the drums did it. So, you know, I, I got to ask, um, yeah, I just brought up the Beatles. And I know years later, you actually got to work with Paul, right? Yes. So can you tell me a little bit about that experience and how that came about? Well, it was uh, through Phil Ramone, a producer, right. the guy that produced uh, sure. all, most of the albums with Billy Joel. Yeah. Um, I guess he, Paul called him and wanted to um, see if uh, Phil would want to produce a record with him, yeah. put a band together. Yeah. So I got a call, uh, and they wouldn't tell me who it was with. It. And I had something very important to do that day, and they said, you got to can cancel it, you got to cancel it. I said, I can't. Uh, who is it? And they kept saying, we can't tell you, we can't tell you. So in, in the long run, I, I actually canceled it, went to the studio, and um, uh, found out that it was Paul McCartney. And uh, when he walked in the room, I the first one to walk in the room was Linda. It was back sure. in the 80s, right? Linda walked in the room, and I, I'm thinking, like, what does Paul McCartney want to do with me? I mean, right. he's a Beatle. I'm nobody, you know? And uh, so Linda walks in the room, and the first thing she does is points at me and says, I know who you are. We've been watching your videos. Wow. What? Paul McCartney's watching our videos? Wow. It's insane. So then uh, Paul walks in, and he walks over to me, and I shake his hand. And, nice to meet you. And he went over to the next guy, and I backed out of the control room and stood in the hallway and said, okay, calm down. He's just a person. He's a musician. He's the musician. He's a Beatle, you know? Sure. So I had to calm down. I had to leave the room to calm down. Yeah. So finally he comes in. What, you know, can you take me through that session and kind of what... Uh... Well, it was great because uh, we did two songs. And uh, the thing that, that it happens when you work with an artist that you listen to on records yep. all, all your life, uh, it happened with Stevie Nicks too. Uh, the voice that comes through the monitor or the headphones yeah. is so familiar. And then you look up and the person is standing right there or sitting at a piano or playing. Yeah. You know, uh, that, that's amazing to me. Yeah. You start giggling. It's, it's like, I can only imagine. You must have yeah. been just a kid in a candy shop at yeah, that point. It's yeah, it's great. Yeah. So can you take me back to the early days of gigging in Long Island and, uh, you know, meeting Billy for the first time? I understand, you know, before you were working with him, you were doing a lot of wedding gigs and a lot yes. of bar gigs, right? Oh, so. God, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, um, uh, you know, myself, Russell Javers, Doug Stegmeyer, and Howie Emerson, who all play on the Turnstiles album. Yeah. Uh, Ru Doug got us in the band and stuff. Right. Uh, we had a band called Topper. Yeah. Russell was writing all the material. It was back uh, uh, in, in the 70s, and we discovered reggae, so we were playing reggae and blues and stuff like that. And um, we weren't making any money, no money. So wh what I had to do was, was I had to figure out a way how to make some dough. So I got this wedding gig. And um, I'm, I'm going to this gig. My, my friend says, I, I set you up with a band. It's going to be great. You're going to sit in for the drummer. He's not going to make it tonight. Here, borrow my tuxedo and go. And my hair really is long now and stuff like that. And yeah. I had played with Mitch Ryder already uh -huh. and done, uh -huh. done that kind of thing, but I had no money. So I go to the gig and um, the sax player comes in and introduces himself. And, and he, he had slick back hair, he was smoking cigarettes, drinking scotch, much older than I was, like yeah. twice my age. And the accordion player, I don't know how he held up the accordion and we saw all the, and there was a trumpet player. So it was yeah. accordion, sax, and trumpet. That was it, and me. Yeah. And I'm thinking, my career is over. What am I doing here? Right. You know, my hair's down here. I right. can try that, that whole thing. Yeah. The first thing that happened was the trumpet player turned around, looked at me, and said, the bride wants us to start with a merengue. I went, what the hell is a merengue? <laughs> is that something you eat? You know? It's like, so, and, uh, long story short, I yeah. ended up staying at the, the, it was called the Narragansett Inn at the mm. time, um, 
for two and a half years, and I learned more in that two and a half years about music, yeah. you know, because you got to play a lot of ethnic music and stuff like that, sure. that when I finally did get with Billy and we went in the studio and uh, people are amazed at the, the groove to Just The Way You Are, which is a brush in the right hand and a stick in the left hand. Right. And they're like, how did you come up with that? And it's like, oh, Bossa Nova is like right. that, you know. So right. that, that really paid off. Yeah. So when you met Billy for the first time, what, was, what do you remember about that interaction? Well, uh, the first time I met Billy, I, I was playing in a top 40 band, actually. And yeah. Doug, Billy, Billy lived in California and was using studio musicians to record the albums and different guys to go on the road. He told Doug Stegmaier on one of the tours, I want to move back to New York. I want the same guys to play on my record that go on the road with me. And I want a New York style drummer. And Billy said, um, Doug said, you, I know the guy, you know, and you yeah. know the guy. So um, Billy came to see me play in this top 40 band. It, it was a halfway decent band. It was only yeah. three guys, guitar, bass, and, and me. Mm -hmm. you know? And he actually came up and sang Feeling All Right with the band. Nice. You know? And the guys in the band kind of knew that, okay, he's Liv's going to leave because he's going to get this gig with Billy Joel. And, you know? yeah. Yeah. and that's what happened. Uh, and then I had to go audition for Billy and play with him. Yeah. So I learned all the songs on the, on the Piano Man album and the Street Life Serenader album. And we played all that stuff, and he really yeah. liked what I did. And then he said, I got this new record that I'm, I'm going to do, and um, I, I, let me run some songs by you and see what you come up with. And he was amazed at how fast I came up with the stuff. Yeah. But he didn't know for 25 years that Doug had slipped me a tape of right. the new stuff. Right. So I knew what he was going to play anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, which brings me to my next you know, topic and question here. We have the, uh, the Turnstiles album here. Which is really, uh, you know, one of Billy's best, and it's some of the best drumming from Lib here. Um, and I, I just really want to go over a couple things on this. First off, um, wh what's your favorite memory of recording this album right here? Oh, well, it was exciting because it was um, the first time playing with Billy. Hmm. And we actually did it with just me, Doug, and Billy in the studio. Just the Interesting. Piece, piano, yeah. bass, and drums. That yeah. was it. Yeah. So we were listening back, and Billy said, you know, I, I can use guitar on this. Well, we said we know guitar players. Right. So eventually, that's how all of Topper became Billy right. Joel's band. Right. But, you know, I, I mean, this, I'm just looking at, you know, we were actually listening to this album before we were here. And, you know, just the start of it, Say Goodbye to Hollywood, you know, you're channeling um, Mr. Hal Blaine in, in Say Goodbye to Hollywood. And I'm wondering, yep. at the very end of that song, I hear Billy yell out, you know, DeVito, you know, what, what are you doing? Is that what he's saying yes, in that? Yes. Hey, DeVito, where are you going? Where are you going? He, so, was, he was overdubbing a, a, a vocal part yeah. in the studio, and I was sitting there, sitting there listening. And when he got to that part, I had gotten up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so, so he was like, hey, DeVito, where are you going? Oh, that's you know. great. And they left it in. They left it in. He that's thought it great. sounded very New York, so yeah. leave it in. Yeah. You know. And any other interesting stories? I mean, I know yeah, Angry Young Man, it's some of the best drumming that I've ever heard on record. Um, is there anything else that was interesting from recording this? Yeah, Angry Young Man. Uh, the, the part that goes, there's a place in the world, right? Yeah. You can hear me playing a drum beat in the background. Yeah. But mostly you hear um, this. Yes. Billy, we were listening back to it, and Billy said, I want, I want a, a, a like galloping horse on it. I want this. And he started to play on his chest. Yeah. I said, you want that? And he goes, yeah. I said, you want exactly that? We yeah. said, yeah. So what we did was went out in the studio, laid him across a bunch of chairs, and really? I played on his chest. Get out of here. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hoop. Wow. All right. So, you know, I mean, just real quick, uh, obviously you have New York State of Mind, Summer Highland Falls, which is, you know, one of the greatest songs of all time, in my opinion, one of Billy's best. It is. Um, and I understand the story behind that was uh, you were dating someone at the time that was... Uh, the listening the to jo the Joni beginning. Mitchell, right? Yes, the drum fill in the, in yeah. the, in the beginning there. Right, and that's where you kind Help of... Help me, does the same drum fill. Yeah, right, exactly. So, no, I mean, it's just, you know, if, if, you, if you're not familiar with Turnstiles, it's, you know, a classic album, one of the best, and yeah. some of the best drumming from Lib. You know, it's funny about this yeah. record. It's like, this record only sold 50,000 copies. Right. You know, but since the other albums came out, they sold more, but yeah. it only sold 50,000 copies. But through our touring career, yeah. we were always Turnstiles heavy. Yeah. Like we always did uh, Summer Hot Falls, we always did New York State of Mind, we did uh, James. Angry Young Man, Miami 2017. Right, right. You know, more songs from this album than any other album. Yeah, interesting. So next up, we have um, the classic 1977, The Stranger album. And we have on the back here, um, with Mr. Phil Ramone, who produced the album, we have Liberty here, uh, Doug 
rest in peace, he's no longer with us anymore. Richie in the middle, uh, and then Billy uh, all the way over here. Let's, and not, this, let's not forget this bottle of wine here, rest in peace, which is no longer with us And anymore. the bottle of wine as well. <laughs> so what, what do you remember about, I mean, I want to get into the album too, but what do you remember about this classic photo and just the photo shoot from that day? What do you remember about this? Well, it was done in the macaroni factory, something like that, in, uh, yeah. in New York City, which isn't there anymore. And I just remember we went down there to eat. Yeah. And there was a photographer there, and he right. just started taking pictures. And, yeah. Uh, there's, there's some great outtakes of that uh, photo, too. I'm yeah, sitting interesting. And we're pouring the wine. Yeah. So this, this album, um, again, another classic. Um, and, you know, I, I, I really want to talk about a um, couple, couple different songs. But first, uh, scenes from an Italian restaurant. Yep. A lot of different changes in that song. It goes a lot of different places. How long did you have to rehearse that? And was that a, you know, when you recorded it, was it just one take the whole way through or what, how did that go down? That song, we were actually doing it on the road already before we went in the studio. Got it. But in the beginning, we were just doing the Brenda and Eddie part. Mm. He would yeah. just start the song and we would just do Brenda and yeah. Eddie. And then he added the rest of the, yeah. da -da -da -da, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we were doing it already on the road and right. we went in and recorded it just like that. One, yeah. boom, one through. And do you remember, was it a lot of takes? Was it just a couple takes? No, a couple of takes. A couple of takes. Done, yeah. Wow, unbelievable. Yeah. It's, by the way, I mean, I, I know there's people out there that have heard it a million times, but there's probably some people that maybe haven't heard it. If you haven't heard it, go listen to it. It's one of the greatest songs of all time. A um, couple other songs on here that I'd like to talk about. You were uh, talking about uh, Just the Way You Are before. Yeah. Um, That's another and, one we're doing on the road. Another one you were doing on the road, but yeah. But it sounded more like You Are the Sunshine of My Life, Stevie Wonder Story. Right. You know, it was more like that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Phil was, Ramones was like, no, 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 we got to come up with something different. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and Moving Out, anything, do you remember anything about recording Moving Out? Oh, I remember when I first heard it. Really? I went to Billy's house. Yeah. His apartment, he was living in the city at the time. Yeah. And he sang me Moving Out, but he, it sounded like this. It sounded yeah. like, Anthony works in the grocery store, saving his pennies for some day. I said, schmuck, that's left in the rain by Neil Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he was like, oh, oh. man. Yeah. And so, but he loved the lyrics so much that he, um, he changed the melody of it. Yeah. And that was written because when we used to travel a uh, tour on the Turnstiles album, yeah. we used to stay at like a Holiday Inn or something like that. Yeah. And we'd all go out and meet by the pool if we were down sure. south. And Richie would play the part of Grandma and I would be the cousin that came out from the city, and Billy yeah. lived on Long Island. And the Holiday Inn became Billy's house on Long Island. And we would say, oh, Richie would be like, oh, it's wonderful what you did with the place. And I'd be like, whoa, I love the pool out here. It's fantastic. And Billy would be yeah. like, you've got to come in and see the basement. I refinished it. we got a bar down there and everything. Yeah. You know? And then he'd say, when are you coming out? When are you moving out of the city? Yeah. When are you? Yeah. And that idea came. Oh, interesting. And the, yeah. the part that goes, dun, dun. Da, da, da. Billy yeah. always used to clear his throat by going. <coughs> yeah. Interesting. And, uh, Interesting. and I understand the the uh, car at the end of that was recorded. That was Doug's Corvette, right? Doug's Corvette. I had a Panasonic yeah. tape recorder with a, a microphone with a wire on it. Yeah. We taped it to the, the rear bumper. Yeah. And we just rode around North Fort Long Island. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And only the good die young. One of your you know classic you know just drum. I mean the drumming on that is just fantastic. How did you come up with that beat? Was that something you came up with that someone else kind of... You well, know? his story is that it was, it was written at a reggae tune. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, he, I, he says, and I faintly remember him yeah. saying that the closest you've ever been to reggae, uh, the closest you've ever been to Jamaica is J Jamaica train station in, in uh, Queens. Right. Where the Long Island Railroad, ch you change trains there. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, but it's funny because that beginning... Uh, Lick in the beginning, yeah. that and and the whole groove to it. Yeah, you know, you, there's only a certain amount of notes that a drummer can play. A certain amount of things a drummer can play. Mm -hmm. So we, great drummers, you know, good drummers borrow, great drummers steal. Sure. That whole thing, the beginning lick and the groove to that, yeah. is from a, a Jimi Hendrix song called "Up from the Skies." Oh, okay. On the Axis Boulders Got Love it. album, Got you, it. you listen. And it starts the same way. Just want to talk Interesting. To you. Yeah. But but you have you have this great way of making it your own, especially like we were talking about before. Say goodbye to Hollywood, classic Hal Blaine. But you you kind of make it your own, and it sounds 
like a Liberty, you know, sound. And, and obviously you had Bruce Botnick doing the mix on that. Right. So has a nice full sound, whereas, you know, Phil Spector, you know, records, they were great, but, you know, a little different, you know. Right. So anyway, um, you know, getting back to Phil Ramon, do you have a favorite memory of working with him in the studio? I know yeah. he was a great guy. Uh, we, he was so great. We called him Uncle Phil. He was yeah. he was the musician behind the glass. You right. know, we trusted everything he said, but he was also very funny. We had a lot a lot of laughs yeah. when we made those albums. Like, yeah. uh, one example is that he had a, a brand new shirt on. He came yeah. to the studio with a brand new shirt. Yeah. And we just so happened to order pizza for lunch that day. So you <laughs> see him eating it. He's eating the pizza and a little bit of sauce falls on his shirt. <laughs> Feels like this. He wipes it off. Yeah. Takes another bite, a little more sauce falls on. The yeah. third time it happened, he looked at the pizza and he said, okay, you want the shirt? <laughs> Take the shirt. <laughs> That's great. That's great. What, um, what do you think was the greatest lesson you learned from him, just being in the studio with him and just watching him do what he did? I learned, well, here's this, the first thing that we did in the studio was mm -hmm. moving out. That was the first song we recorded. With, yeah. with, and Billy wanted us to go, um, um, ba -da -da. Da -da. Yeah. Uh, Phil came up to me and he goes, no, this is what people remember. Yeah. That's what they remember. Right. And that's how moving out goes, boom. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. They yeah. remember two and four. And he, he showed me that, you know, how important that is mm -hmm. to make people, mm. regular people that don't know anything about music, understand what you're doing. That's great. Yeah, he, he really was a one-of-a-kind, and um, yeah, moving on here, um, I want to get into, I, you know, we only have a certain amount of time today, there's so much stuff to cover, there's so many great albums, so many great, uh, you know, uh, you know, just uh, things that Liberty contributed we about, here. We talked about two records, I did 11 more. Uh, it's, 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 it's amazing, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, but we can't cover everything today, but I do want to jump to one of my favorites, uh, which has Frankie Valley written all over it, as we know, Uptown Girl. Yeah. I'm curious... Um, what do you remember about recording that uh, that track, and also, uh, you know, the beginning drum fill and the bridge? W w were those your ideas? Was that Billy? Was that you know? Can you kind of the beginning drum fill? Um, it was just one of those things. He counted it off. I probably didn't do it bef the one before. Yeah. But it just came out like that. Yeah. And uh, somebody once told me they said, you know what that drum fill is? Yeah. It says your name. It says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the break, yes. Um, uh, the, with the, the time bridge, fills, yeah. yeah. I remember going up to Billy and saying, "This is what the Four Seasons." Oh, I love it. Love. I love that break. It's the Four Seasons because I love the Four Seasons. Oh, me too. They're classic. Love yeah. them. Yeah. And you know that whole. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love it. It's great. A anything funny from that session? I mean, was there anything interesting or or just uh, I don't know. Well, there's some things I can't tell you about. Yeah, but, of course, of but, course. Uh, but I mean, there's it, just there's a lot of harmonies in that song, and you know. Oh yeah, a lot of harmonies. That that came later though, you know. That the, came later. The, yeah. The studio guys came in and, and sang mm -hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. But um, the the song when he originally played it for everybody, mm. it uh, was the other way around. It it uh, it was uh, and when she la, da, 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 and then uptown girl that was something like that and yeah, Phil yeah. went no it should go. This way, interesting, yeah. interesting, yeah, very so, yeah, cool. We all, you know, Billy wrote the songs, but everybody in the in the studio at the time had a part Some contribution in, in yeah. the um, in the arranging of it. Yeah, cool. So, you know, moving on, you know, you've you've done what a lot of drummers and musicians hope to do, you know, in your career, which is creating your own sound. Who are some of your favorite drummers? Okay, first was of course. Well, my mother loved Gene Krupa. Yeah. So I, I really, uh, you know, I, a lot of guys, drummers like Buddy Rich. I like mm -hmm. Gene Krupa. Mm -hmm. I think Gene Krupa was more of a solid uh, m music man, not a soloist, but even though he did solos, but yeah. more of a music man. But what really got me playing drums was Ringo. Ringo. Of course, when the Beatles yeah. were on the Ed Sullivan show, that was it. I was hooked. I was 13 years old. Yeah. And, you know, that. Yeah. But because they were from England and they, like, had straight hair with bangs and everything like that, and I was Italian and my hair curled up and right. stuff. I really couldn't relate until the Young Rascals came out. Dino and Donnelli. there was three of them <laughs> that were Italian in that yeah. band. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then Dino Donnelli knocked right. Ringo off the stool for a while. Yeah. 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 And then from there it went on to Mitch Mitchell, Ginger Baker, and one of my favorite drummers of all times is Jim Capoli from Traffic. Oh, I love Jim Capoli. Yeah, There's a absolutely. lot of traffic influence in yeah. Billy's songs. Like, yeah. uh, you know, the traffic was always. Doom, doom. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so sure. is Stiletto. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, all, yeah. all that stuff. I'm guessing you like Hal Blaine, too. Love. I mean, who does? Well, you know, I was a little you know. disappointed when I found out that Hal Blaine was eight of my favorite drummers. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that, I mean, his story is unbelievable, too. You know, I, yeah. uh, two years yeah. ago at the NAMM show... Um, was I, he over there? He came up, I played with Ronnie Spector. We did a show. Oh, nice, there, nice. And Hal came up and with me played uh, Be My Baby. Oh, that's great. That must have been phenomenal. Uh, you know, he doesn't have the power that he used to have. Right. But when he started, the boom, 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 boom yeah. It was like, oh my, that's it, right yeah. there. And I mean, all the stuff he did with the Beach Boys, I mean, it's just un yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. You know, some of the greatest. Yep. So, you know, you've toured all over the world with Billy, um, you know, and, and everywhere in between. Uh, do you have a favorite venue or favorite show that you did? Well, uh, going, to, going to Havana, Cuba in, um, in 79 yeah. was very exciting. Oh, that's you great. Because we yeah. went over with 150 other musicians. And, yeah. Uh, you know, that was great. But going to the Soviet Union was a major. Unbelievable. Major, How know? many people were there? Like 250,000, something sick. like that? It was sick. We played... Three days in Moscow, three days in uh, Leningrad. Yeah. Leningrad doesn't even exist anymore. Um, unbelievable. <laughs> we I were mean, behind but, that wall. We right. were behind that wall. I mean, what was that like for you, though? Tell me. I mean, well, you know. uh, we did a couple of gigs in England first yeah. before we went over to warm up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had a couple of days off, and I'm, you know, going around because they said, get some food, bring things, put things in your suitcase that you can eat because you might not want to eat what you see there. Yeah. And, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm walking around, and I'm thinking, okay. I'm getting ready to go to what I perceive to be the enemy because yeah. we used to have to hide under the desks when we were kids because sure. they were going to kill us, sure. you know. And <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going on Lufthansa, which was World War II. Okay, we beat the Germans. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm going behind this wall that yeah. they don't let people out. Right. And my name is Liberty. Oh my God! What am right. I to do? What am I doing? <laughs> That's great. But That's we were great. received yeah. with a warm welcome. Yeah, you that know? must have I been mean, something. I mean, I stood, yeah. I stood on the land of the Soviet Union and mm. I looked up at the sky and I thought, "That's the same sky that's over us." And yeah, it's, it's the governments that fight, not the people. Right. People. Right. So, what I got to ask: What's the nicest compliment you've ever received from either a peer or a music legend? The nicest compliment I have ever received? Yeah. I'd like to sleep with you tonight, some pretty girl says. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got uh, a few of them. I mean, uh, uh, Sting tapped me on the shoulder once and said, you're a great drummer. Wow. And I said, thank you. He goes, nice. no, no, you're a great drummer. Yeah. And, uh, uh, well, you know, I just did a, a film, a film, a documentary called The Hired Gun. Check that out, by the way. If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. Check it out. And when Kenny Aronoff says, Billy Joel sounds like Billy Joel, of course, and Livy DeVito, you know, yeah. it's like you really don't think about that attachment yeah. or how people actually listen to the songs, you know. Cause but the real music lovers do, you know, the people yeah. that know the, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You stand for the show tonight? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You should be able to hear absolutely. It. So, what, um, what is a song you wished you drummed on that you didn't drum on? Oh, geez, there's so many of them. Maybe a couple. Maybe a couple. I wish yeah. I drummed on Strawberry Fields. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, yeah. Uh, you know, actually, um, when we did Nile and Curtain, the song Laura, mm -hmm. you know, that, that whole album was the tip of the hat to the Beatles. But Laura, sometimes I close my eyes in the solo section and I think, is that the Beatles or is that us? Yes. Yeah. You want to sound so much like them. Right. You right. Know? Yeah. Let me ask you. Um, this is a good one. I think it's a good one. You tell me. If you were to have a drum off with anyone, uh, dead or alive, who would you pick? A, a drum off. Play you, against? you drumming off against another drummer. Dead or alive? I'd be better on a jerk off than a <laughs> drum off. <laughs> what, are you kidding me? No, Come on, if you had to pick. I don't do drum solos. In a hired gun, they forced me to do this drum yeah. solo. Yeah. But I never did a drum solo. All right, what about this? If you had to play with someone else, you know, maybe, maybe not a drum off, but just playing with someone else, dead or alive, that you wish oh, you would have played well, with? Well, I, I played with Hal already, yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, th those guys were great. And the, and the guys, you know, the guys that played on the Four Seasons records yeah. and the guys that played with Dion and right, those sure. guys, you know. Yeah, yeah. Got it. So, you know, let's, let's move on here. Um, advice for today's generation of musicians and drummers, maybe up and coming, What's, what's the advice from, from the master here? Master. <laughs> I said I'd be better in a jerk-off. Now I'm going to be a masturbator. <laughs> um, 
No, it it was different back when we, we were with Billy. Yeah. You know, there was A and R uh, people that came to the clubs that you played in. They would yeah. check out the bands and and they would say, you know, it would be that come to my office on Monday. We're going to sign you a record deal. You yeah. know, and they would do yeah. that. It would happen. That's yeah. the way it happened. Today, it is so difficult to get yeah. a record deal. Uh, you know, they want uh, just to hear. They want to hear a finished record. Yeah. Well, I mean, mixed. Um, they want everything up mastered, front. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And then they do the 360, uh, yeah, 360 deal, deals, which they yeah, take right. everything. Right. You know, so unless you have the passion, you forget it. You yeah. Know, the passion is the only thing that drives you. Yeah. You know, I still love to play, and that's why we're doing what we do. Yeah. I mean, believe me, after you know being the age I am and having done it for so long, and Richie and Russell will tell you the same thing. Yeah, it hurts after a while, you know. Sure. But I love to do it so yeah. much. Well, God bless you. You look great. I mean, you know. Well, thanks. So let me ask you. Um, you know, I, I was poking around on your Instagram, and we're coming up to the you know second year. It's hard to believe of Prince's passing, mm. and I saw that you had a, a story on there. Um, Back in '83, you were with uh, Stevie, I, Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. Yeah. So, can you tell me that story? What What was going on? There he came the to time? see the show. It was at the Meadowlands, I think, or, yeah. or something like that. Anyway, he came to see the show, and he was sitting in one of the rooms. Yeah. And you couldn't go up to him. You couldn't yeah. shake his hand. But I had my daughter, my oldest daughter, now is 37. Yeah. It was uh, like four years old then. Yeah. And he just kept making faces at her. <laughs> yeah. You know. So that was kind of <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like that's yeah. Prince making faces at my daughter, and right. I can't go up and say hi to him. Right. You know, right. but I was also very good friends uh, with his last drummer, uh, John, John Blackwell, Blackwell, who also who passed away. Very uh, sad. You know, and he had great stories about Prince. And Prince, oh, I bet. Yeah. It turns out, like on the Modern Drama cover, Prince allowed them to use an image of him, and, oh, and okay. you know, interesting. Uh, yeah. So he he was tight. You know. Yeah, he was just un unbelievable. Yeah. You know. All right, so I wanna I wanna have people uh, know where they can find you on social media, but also where they can check out uh, the Lords of Fifty Second Street, which is the group that you're touring with right now. Yes. Um, so and and also if you want to talk about your charity too, the Little Kids Rock, I yeah. think you know that's that's great. Little, um, well, the Lords of Fifty Second Street, we, we're on. Uh, we have a, a Facebook page and we have a website. The Facebook page usually has more changes on it. Sure. Than the website does. Yeah. And uh, you know you can write. To us there, yeah. Or you can write to me on Facebook. Uh, I have a Facebook page. I have a fan page and a personal personal page. page. Yeah. I get more response on the personal page. Yeah. Um, I also am in another band called the Slim Kings. The Slim Kings. We yeah. um, we do all original material. We've had placements on on TV all, yeah. all the time, and um, uh, so there's the Slim Kings on Facebook too. Yeah. And we also have a, a website. And then there's Little Kids Rock. Yeah, Little Kids Rock. Little yeah. Kids Rock puts uh, instruments in the hands of kids in underprivileged schools yeah. where the uh, music curriculum has been taken out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they feel that um, you can learn, teach a kid one chord and yeah. they, they could play 25 songs. You yeah. teach a kid the next chord in the progression, they can play 50 songs. Right. You teach a kid the third chord of the three chord progression, they can play 150 songs. Yeah. And if you teach them, what they want to know now, mm -hmm. they will eventually be interested and curious about like the classics and they'll want to go back and know where things came from and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a great organization. We do a gala every year. Uh, last year we played with uh, uh, Smokey Robinson nice. and people like that. You know, we, we played with everybody. I hear Brian Wilson played Brian with you. Wilson. How was that? How was that? Well, I'll tell you what, it was uh, like you get a chill when you do oh, yeah. God Only Knows uh, and Brian Wilson singing it, you know. One of the best. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. I, I can only imagine, yeah. Well, listen, for this show, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Curtain Call 87 on Twitter and Instagram. Really appreciate the support. I want to thank this guy again, Liberty. Well, thank you. You are the man. Uh, I wish you all the best in, uh, in the future here of what's to come. And uh, is there anything else we could look forward to? I mean, are you releasing any, new, any, any, uh, any more records or anything else coming up? Well, there's a, a new album out by this uh, kid, uh, Jesse... Hin Hinch. Yeah. Hinch, yeah, what is his name? I th I don't, yeah. I'm not sure. Jim. I play on that. Yeah. I play on that. That's the latest thing that yeah. just came okay. out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Look him up. It's yeah. a really good album. He sings yeah. bright, the kid. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, me and Richie just did uh, some work for the government, actually, yeah. a, a, a nice. public service thing. And, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're doing a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, very good. 
All right, well, uh, thank you again, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Very good. <laughs> <laughs>